Through the ages, Socrates' name has become synonymous with deep thinking, intelligent questioning, and profound enlightenment. But who was the man behind the legend? To understand Socrates, we must first understand the historical and cultural context of ancient Greece, where he lived and taught. Ancient Greece was a remarkable civilization that flourished from the 8th to the 4th century BC. It was a cradle of democracy, art, literature, science, and philosophy. The Greeks were curious and creative, exploring various aspects of human life and nature. However, ancient Greece was also a turbulent and chaotic world, marked by wars, conflicts, and political upheavals. Socrates witnessed the Peloponnesian War, a long and devastating conflict between Athens and Sparta that lasted from 431 to 404 BC. He also faced the rise of sophistry, a movement of teachers who claimed to have wisdom and knowledge but often used rhetoric and persuasion to manipulate people for their own gain. He also experienced the political turmoil in Athens, where democracy was threatened by tyranny and corruption. In this challenging environment, Socrates developed his own philosophy that challenged the norms and conventions of his society. He rejected the conventional wisdom of his time, which was based on tradition, authority, or popular opinion. He believed that true knowledge lies in questioning everything, especially our own beliefs. Socrates was a master of the Socratic method, a technique that involved engaging in critical dialogue with others. He would often ask simple yet thought-provoking questions, such as what is justice, what is virtue, or what is the good life? He would then examine the answers given by his interlocutors, exposing their contradictions, inconsistencies, or ignorance. He would then try to guide them to a clearer and deeper understanding of the topic. Socrates did not claim to have any definitive answers or doctrines himself. He famously said that he knew only one thing, that he knew nothing. He was humble and honest about his own ignorance and always open to learning from others. He believed that the only way to attain wisdom is to admit our ignorance and seek knowledge through dialogue. One of the key concepts that Socrates introduced in his philosophy is the theory of forms. According to this theory, there are two levels of reality, the visible world of concrete objects and phenomena, and the invisible world of abstract ideas and concepts. The visible world is imperfect, changing, and relative. The invisible world is perfect, eternal, and absolute. For example, there are many different things that we call beautiful in the visible world, such as a painting, a flower, or a person but they are all imperfect reflections of the idea of beauty itself, which exists in the invisible world as a form. Socrates believed that our souls belong to the invisible world of forms and that they have innate knowledge of these forms. However, when we are born into the visible world, we forget this knowledge and become confused by our senses and opinions. Therefore, Socrates aimed to help people recollect their forgotten knowledge by reminding them of the forms through dialogue. Another key concept that Socrates introduced in his philosophy is the concept of the soul. Socrates believed that the soul is the essence of who we are as human beings. It is not just a part of our body or mind, but rather a distinct entity that transcends both. The soul is immortal and indestructible, it does not die when our body dies, but instead continues to exist in another realm. Socrates also believed that the soul has three parts, reason, spirit, and appetite. Reason is the part that seeks truth and knowledge. Spirit is the part that seeks honor and glory. Appetite is the part that seeks pleasure and satisfaction. These three parts often conflict with each other. For example, Reason may tell us to do something good or noble, but appetite may tempt us to do something terrible or selfish. Socrates argued that we should always follow reason over spirit or appetite. Otherwise, we will harm our souls and become unhappy. He believed that virtue is nothing but harmony among these three parts of the soul. When reason rules over spirit and appetite, 
we achieve virtue. When spirit or appetite rule over reason, we fall into vice. Socrates also believed that virtue is identical to happiness. When we act virtuously according to reason, we become happy. When we act viciously according to spirit or appetite, we become unhappy. He believed that no one knowingly does evil. People only do evil out of ignorance or confusion. Therefore, he believed that knowledge is power. When we know what is good for our soul, we will do it. When we do not know what is good for our soul, we will not do it. One of the most important ideas that Socrates introduced in his philosophy is the idea of living according to reason. He believed that reason is the highest faculty of the soul and that it can guide us to the best way of living. He believed that reason can help us discover the universal principles and values that govern human life, such as justice, courage, wisdom, and moderation. He believed that reason can also help us examine ourselves and our actions and correct our mistakes and errors. He believed that reason can also help us face the challenges and difficulties of life, such as pain, fear, death, and injustice. Socrates exemplified his idea of living according to reason in his own life. He was always curious and eager to learn from others, regardless of their status or background. He was always honest and humble about his own limitations and shortcomings. He was always courageous and loyal to his principles and convictions, even when they were unpopular or dangerous. He was always moderate and self-controlled in his desires and passions, avoiding excesses and indulgences. He was always cheerful and optimistic in his attitude and outlook, finding joy and meaning in every situation. Socrates's philosophy is not only a set of abstract ideas or concepts, but also a way of life that he practiced and embodied. His philosophy is not only a source of knowledge or wisdom, it is also a source of inspiration and guidance. His philosophy is not only a challenge to our assumptions or beliefs, it is also a challenge to our actions or choices. Socrates' philosophy is best expressed in his own words and deeds, which are recorded in various dialogues and works by his followers and admirers. Some of the most famous dialogues and pieces that feature Socrates as a main character or speaker are The Apology. This is the speech that Socrates gave at his trial, where he defended himself against the charges of corrupting the youth and introducing strange gods. He explained his mission as a philosopher, his method of questioning, and his attitude towards death. He also uttered some of his most memorable quotes, such as the unexamined life is not worth living, I am not wise, nor do I think I know what I do not know, and to fear death is nothing but to think oneself wise when one is not. The Apology is written by Plato, one of Socrates' most devoted students. The Crito this is the dialogue that Socrates had with his friend Crito, who tried to persuade him to escape from prison before his execution. Socrates refused to escape, arguing that it would be unjust and immoral to disobey the laws of the city that he loved. He also explained his concept of the social contract, which states that we have an obligation to follow the laws of our society as long as they are fair and reasonable. The Crito is also written by Plato. The Phaedo. This is the dialogue that Socrates had with his friends on the day of his death, where he discussed the immortality of the soul and the nature of the afterlife. He argued that the soul is separate from the body and that it survives death and goes to another realm where it encounters either reward or punishment based on its deeds in life. He also described his vision of the ideal world of forms, where the soul can contemplate the pure essence of truth, beauty, goodness, and justice. He also showed his calmness and courage in facing death, drinking the hemlock poison without fear or regret. The Phaedo is also written by Plato. The Symposium. This is a dialogue that depicts a banquet where various guests give speeches on the topic of love. Socrates gives one of the most influential speeches where he introduces the concept of platonic love, 
which is a love that transcends physical attraction and seeks spiritual union with the object of one's affection. He also tells the story of Diotima, a priestess who taught him about the ladder of love, which is a process of ascending from lower forms of love to higher forms of love until one reaches the highest form of love, the love of wisdom or philosophy. The symposium is also written by Plato, the Republic. This is a dialogue that explores the question, what is justice? Socrates engages in a conversation with various interlocutors, such as Thrasymachus, Glaucon, Adiamantus, and others, who present different views on justice, such as might makes right, the social contract, or the greatest good for the greatest number. Socrates refutes their views and proposes his own view, which is based on the analogy between the city and the soul. He argues that justice is harmony among the three parts of the soul, reason, spirit, and appetite. He also argues that justice leads to happiness, and injustice leads to unhappiness. He then describes his vision of the ideal city, where the citizens are divided into three classes, the rulers, the auxiliaries, and the producers. Each class performs its own function according to its natural ability and inclination. The rulers are those who have the highest degree of reason and wisdom. They are responsible for governing the city and ensuring its well-being. The auxiliaries are those who have courage and spirit. They are responsible for defending the city and enforcing its laws. The producers are those who have appetite and desire. They are responsible for producing and supplying the material needs of the city. Socrates also introduces the concept of the philosopher king, who is the ideal ruler for such a city. The philosopher king is someone who has mastered both philosophy and politics. He has knowledge of the forms, especially the form of the good. He has a harmonious soul that is ruled by reason. He has a virtuous character that is free from corruption. He has a benevolent will that seeks the best interest of all. Socrates claims that only such a person can ensure justice and happiness for himself and for others. The Republic is also written by Plato. These are some of the most famous works that feature Socrates as a main character or speaker. Many more works depict or mention Socrates in various ways, such as Xenophon's Memorabilia, Aristotle's Metaphysics, and Diogenes Laetius lives of the eminent philosophers. These works offer different perspectives and interpretations of Socrates' life and philosophy, and they show how influential and controversial he was in his own time and in later generations. Socrates' philosophy has had a lasting impact and legacy on Western thought and culture. He is widely regarded as the father of Western philosophy, as he inspired many of the greatest philosophers who came after him, such as Plato, Aristotle, Descartes, Kant, Hegel, Nietzsche, and others. His philosophy also shaped many of the fields and disciplines that are essential to human knowledge and inquiry, such as logic, ethics, psychology, education, law, and politics. His philosophy also addressed many of the contemporary issues and challenges that we face today, such as the nature and value of democracy, the role and responsibility of citizenship, the meaning and purpose of life, the quest for happiness and fulfillment, the importance of self-knowledge and self-improvement, the role of reason and dialogue in resolving conflicts and seeking truth, and the relationship between human beings and the divine. Socrates was a man who lived according to his philosophy. He was a man who questioned everything, who sought wisdom above all else, who cared for his soul more than his body, who lived according to reason rather than passion, who acted with virtue rather than vice, who faced death with courage rather than fear. He was a man who challenged us to think for ourselves, to examine our lives, to seek the truth, to do what is right, to be what we are meant to be. Thank you for joining us on this revealing journey into the wisdom of Socrates. Don't forget to subscribe to Philanthropia for more insightful content. Until next time.